Hello, and welcome to Endor N-Gauge Model Railway. I'm Jonathan. In previous videos, I've mentioned that the auxiliary switches on my point motors weren't working reliably. Here you can see me switching a point lever multiple times before the LED changes. Sometimes one set of sidings works quite well. On this occasion, filming to demonstrate its flakiness, most of the points worked very well. The smaller set of sidings were consistently unreliable. Before I embarked on any radical change, I tested a theory. Is the reliability an issue with how far the point motor arm can move? I disconnected one of the motors from its point rod. It still didn't switch the LED though, even with full travel available. Here you can see me wiggling the motor to find the place where the switch will actually activate, which was a very specific position. When I tried to fix the point rod back to the motor, it moved out of that very specific position. I've also had problems with one of the points that connect the two outer loops. I'd noticed my pannier tank having trouble over it, and when I tested it with a potentiometer, found that the frog wasn't powered. I followed the connection along and found that the auxiliary switch common just wasn't getting any power, so it's the point motor auxiliary switch that's the issue. On these two points I don't have the benefit of any LEDs to show me whether or not the switch is working. Since I rarely use these points I made a temporary connection with some crocodile clips, which let the pannier run over the point frog smoothly. This auxiliary switching flakiness was a problem that I really needed to sort out, because besides the LEDs indicating the wrong route, it meant the point frog polarity was wrong and would cause short circuits. As I mentioned in video number 5, on the electrofrog point it can cause an immediate short circuit without anything running over the point. I considered a few options and decided to add a micro switch at the end of each point rod. It was by far the cheapest option, on Amazon I found a pack of 20 with long arms for $4.99. The micro switches control the existing relays, they are replacing the auxiliary switches in the point motor, with everything else staying the same. To fit the first microswitch I experimented with its position, listening for its click to work out if it was in the right place. Once happy with its position I screwed it down, but in the process it moved slightly from where I wanted it to be and it stopped working. I made a sleeve of cardboard to go over the switch arm, which made enough of a difference. Later, I took the second screw out, tweaked the position, and tightened the first screw. So far, that's been good enough to hold it in the right place. For other switches later on, I either made temporary connections into the existing LEDs, or to a loose LED and battery, so that it would be much more obvious whether or not the micro switch was in a position that worked, or if it had slipped. I used temporary connections with crocodile clips until I was happy that the switches were working. In getting close up to the point motors, I found some of them had what looked like very corroded solder joints to the cables, so I can't rule out my terrible soldering as the issue with the SEEP auxiliary switching. Regardless, the AUX switch cables were now redundant, so I desoldered and removed them. Happily, the same spade connectors used for my point switches fitted the micro switches, so no soldering needed there, and I knew what I needed to buy more of. As well as moving to micro switches, I decided to experiment with a Rails Connect surface mount point motor. It was quite easy to fit, although it's designed to connect directly to the point tie bar, it's just as suited to connecting to the end of a rod. Overall, they're much easier to fit than the SEEP point motors, but they're also two or three times more expensive than the basic SEEP PM2 point motors that don't have an auxiliary switch. They take up the same kind of surface area as the SEEP point motors, but take a lot less vertical space, so it could be hidden under less dramatic scenic features. Ultimately, at £8 to £9 each in March 2023, 
they're still not too expensive. So if I were starting from scratch, I think I'd choose these, or something similar, rather than ones that are designed to go below board. It wasn't all ideal, though. After a bit of use, the point motor's moving bar started to get stuck underneath the microswitch arm. I fixed this by sliding a strip of 0.5mm plastic card beneath this area. Here I show one layer, but two were needed in the end. You might also notice that the point motor's bar springs back a bit when it's in the up position as we look at it. That's being caused by the spring on the microswitch arm. It seems to work okay on Endor though. I think this might be because I've left the springs in the points. Without those, I wonder if the microswitch arm would be pushing the point blades back into a bad position. They haven't been in use for very long, but I'm pleased to report that so far the microswitches have been reliable. That's all for now. Bye bye.